Grüezi and welcome to Zurich Airport, our gateway to Switzerland. Soon you will be landing at our airport and we are already looking forward to your visit. Before you get here, we would like to give you some more information about your future flight operation at our busy hub. Zurich is one of Europe's busiest airports, handling approximately 30 million passengers per year. The gateway to Switzerland is scenically located to the north of the Alps and connects its biggest city to 185 destinations in 66 countries around the world. Let's take a look at operations aspects and focus on the preferential runway system at Zurich Airport. It is based on a state contract between Switzerland and Germany and is applied as long as weather conditions permit. Its main objective is to mitigate noise pollution by air traffic to and from Zurich Airport over German territories at certain times of the day. On an ordinary day, the early morning flights are scheduled to land on runway 34 and depart from runway 32. Once the German ordinance has ceased, Zurich Airport operates its normal concept, offering landings on runway 14 and departures out of runway 28 or 16. In the evening, the German ordinance again comes into force and your landing is scheduled on runway 28 and departure out of runway 32. Refer to your official airport documentations and NOTAMs for exact times and runway allocation. Whether it's distraction, high workload or another contributing factor, we all know that a simple misunderstanding in an unfamiliar environment can easily happen. In the worst case, they may add up to a serious incident or even an accident. Did you know that one of the most devastating accidents in aviation history was a runway incursion? It was on a foggy day in March 1977 when two Boeing 747s collided on the runway at Tenerife North Airport on the Canary Islands. As KLM 4805 initiated its takeoff run, the Pan Am Flight 1736 was still taxiing down the runway. Shrouded in thick fog, the two airplanes collided, killing 583 people and making it the deadliest accident in aviation history. Fortunately, not all runway incursions lead to tragic accidents, and it's not always airplanes that intrude into the runway safety area. Quite often, runway incursion incidents are caused by vehicles, provoking aborted takeoffs or go arounds. Happenings like these showed us that incidents and accidents related to runway incursions can happen almost on every airport and at any time. The runway layout at our airport makes runway crossings inevitable for almost every aircraft movement. The local runway safety team analyzes occurrences, issues awareness-raising documentation and recommends best practices for safe runway operations. We are now reaching out to you and your fellow colleagues on the flight deck to help us prevent further incidents. Zurich Airport has a complex runway system. To the northeast, runway 14 hosts most of our landings. Our longest runway, 1634, is located on the west side and is mainly used for departures of long-haul flights. It intersects with runway 1028 to the south, our main departure runway. The intersecting runways, together with the runway operating concept and the fact that the two aprons are located to the north and south of runway 1028, add to the complexity of our operations. For communication matters, most of our taxiways and tarmac areas are controlled by Apron Control. You will be communicating with Apron North and Apron South. The respective sectors are divided by the runway axis 1028. Movements on the runways are exclusively controlled by Tower Control. 
In certain cases, ground control handles runway crossings. Let us now familiarize you with our local flight operations by pointing out some highlights you will be experiencing when flying into Zurich on an ordinary day. This will give you a better understanding of our runway and taxiway layout, the number of frequency changes involved, and explains our hotspots and special procedures. Remember, for early mornings, as well as late evening arrivals, and of course special weather conditions, our runway concept will be adapted. As we apply minimum runway occupancy time, your support to vacate via Hotel One is highly appreciated. Inform Tower Control accordingly if you need to vacate via Hotel Two or Three, as these are alternative runway exits. As you are vacating the runway, you will be handed over to Apron North. Make sure you properly clear the runway and if not yet in contact with Apron North, hold your position until you have received your respective taxi clearance. As the tarmac area around Terminal E is in close proximity to runway 14, there is an increased risk of collision. Most long-haul flights are parked on Terminal E, giving you a rather short taxi in time to your gate. If you are parked on the south side of Terminal E, or as most short-haul flights on Terminal 1 or 2, you will normally continue along Taxiway Juliet. On your left-hand side, there are the de-icing pads Charlie, and ahead of you is runway 1028. Soon, you will be handed back to tower control for the runway crossing. You are now approaching the first hotspot, which is located at holding point Juliet of runway 1028. Due to the rather short taxi time, the increased workload from switching the radio frequencies twice and the fact that the vast concrete area ahead will likely reduce your overview, the risk of a runway incursion is elevated. Make sure to hold short of runway 1028 until tower control clears you to cross. Once across, make sure you properly clear the runway to permit further departures. You will be instructed to contact Apron South for further taxi clearance to your parking position. When taxiing out for departure from Terminal 1 or 2, the area of holding point Echo and Fox at runway 1028 is our second hotspot. Again, the vast concrete area will likely reduce your overview, making taxiing challenging. Most flights will be departing from runway 28. Therefore, you will be making a sharp right turn from taxiway Echo or Fox onto taxiway Alpha to continue along the south side of the runway axis to holding point Alpha 2. Do not taxi forward to Alpha 1 until you have received the corresponding clearance from tower control in order to facilitate movement of opposite traffic. If you are departing out of runway 16, you will be handed over to ground control for the runway crossing to the north side. If you are parked on Terminal E, expect to taxi on the north side of the runway 1028 along taxiway Bravo or Charlie. While taxiing around Terminal E, be vigilant for arriving traffic from your left, taxiing along taxiway Juliet. Departures from runway 16 will taxi along taxiway Echo or Fox towards the designated holding points. Be aware of the vast concrete area around taxiway Echo and Fox just north of runway 1028. It will reduce your overview and extra vigilance is required to follow your clearance. While operating at Zurich Airport, you will be faced with up to three hotspot areas. The first one after your landing on runway 14 and approaching holding point Juliet north of runway 1028. Be aware of congested areas as well as an increased workload due to several frequency changes. 
when taxiing out to your departure runway, the vast concrete area around Holding Point Echo and Fox, south of runway 1028, makes it difficult to maintain the exact overview of your location. The same applies to the area just north of the runway axis 1028, where another vast spot of concrete will challenge your overview. In order to prevent possible runway incursions, illuminated red stop bars are placed in front of every runway crossing point. Such red stop bars may never be crossed without ATC clearance. Also, never cross any illuminated red stop bar even if the corresponding clearance has been received. Instead, inform ATC or apron control about the situation. When flying into Zurich Airport during winter time, you might require de-icing. Our de-icing pads are located east and north of Terminal E and offer remote de-icing procedures. In general, you will need to request de-icing via the designated de-ice coordinator. Once ready for taxi, apron control will allocate the respective de-icing lane where you will be handed over to communicate directly with your de-icing crew. With strong easterly winds, expect departures out of runway 10 and landings on runway 14. This increases complexity due to the crossing flight paths of departing flights with potential missed approaches. Therefore, the approach spacing needs to be increased, thus reducing the traffic rate, and delays may be expected. Zurich Airport is a busy hub with a complex operating concept and runway layout. These factors will put some additional workload on you and your fellow crew members. We hope this introduction gave you a good overview of our operations and familiarized you with our hotspots. We are convinced that the following rules will help to mitigate the risks for runway incursions. Consider adding the expected taxi clearance to your takeoff and approach briefing. Verify ATC instructions within the cockpit crew. Clarify your ATC clearance if in doubt. Hold your position if the situation is unclear. Never cross an illuminated red stop bar. Request a follow me car or a marshaller at no extra cost. We look forward to welcoming you to Zurich Airport soon. If you have any questions or feedback, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much for your contribution to flight safety. Your runway safety team at Zurich Airport wishes you always happy landings.